All right, now another thing that we were saying, and we didn't really explain it, but we said, yeah, you can just do it, is when there's a number out the front, right? You know how we could deal with x to the 4? What's the derivative of x to the 4? 4x, 4x to the power of 3. So you just like, coefficient comes out the front, power reduces, okay? And then we said to you for something like this, you're like, oh, just forget about that 3 for a minute, right? What happens to the x squared? 2 comes out the front. 2 becomes a 1, so it's, that's just 2x. And then we said, oh, now put it back, right? Now, how can we just say that? Well, I'm going to go back to first principles, right? If instead of a sum of functions, what if I had multiples of a function? Right? What if I had, how did I write it? Some function which was just another function multiplied by a constant. Right? So let's call our other function g, and let's call our, our constant number at the front. It can, doesn't have to be 3, or 8, or negative 2. Let's just call it a, where a is any number you like. Okay. Think about how this will work with first principles. When you go ahead and you say f dash, okay, what's the first thing I'm going to write in my first principles? It's always the first thing. It's written up there. Our limb. The limit, right? The limit. I'm interested in these tangents, not secants. Okay. Now I want to do this next part, right? Think about this carefully. Instead of writing this, I'm going to replace it with this function g, bless you, multiplied by a constant, right? So the first thing will be a times what? What's going to be in here? Have a look. We always start with the higher value, right? So it's x plus h. And then I'm going to subtract a, of x. a, that's just the constant, times g of x. There's the lower value. Upper value, lower value. What's on the denominator? It's always h on the denominator, isn't it? Okay. Now, remember how when we thought about these limits, right? We noticed that some things didn't care about what h was. You're like, what happens to this x? Nothing. X is still X. He doesn't care about H. But this guy, this does care, right? So it changes value. Now I'm going to ask this question again. Look at these two guys here. I'll highlight it for you. When H changes, as it gets teeny, teeny, tiny, right? What happens to A? How does A change? Like, how does this 3 change at the front? Does the, does the 3 change depending on what H is? It doesn't. 3 is just 3. It's completely independent, right? So this a is just going to stay as a. I'm so confident it will stay a independent of h that I can write it as a, you see it's a factor? I can factorize the entire thing out. So I'm going to write this a all the way out the front. Uh, think about the g. The g is not just a number, right? The g is actually a Function, this is function notation. I know, unfortunately, this is where you just start running out of ways to write things, right? If I wrote to you this, right, you would rightly say that's five times blah, 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 right? But when you see this, hopefully your brain switches into, oh, this is function notation. This is not, we don't mean this is multiply this through. We mean this is f is a thing and you're putting x plus 1 into it. Okay? And I know it's like it's the same notation, which is a bit gross that we have to use the same thing for both, but it does look like that, but it's not. So I'm not, I'm not factorizing out that g. I'm just factoring as factorizing out the um, a. So what does that leave me with on the numerator? G is a minus a over a. Well, hold on a second. I've factorized these a's out, right? Oh. So what's left behind is all the other stuff. So g of x plus h and g of x, g of x very good, over all over h, fantastic. But have a look, have a look at this thing here. What is this? This by definition is first principles for g. We saw it just over here, right? So this is just g dash, see that? So what happened was, yeah, you want to have a look? So this is what we're focusing on here. This guy here, yeah. that by definition is this guy oh, here, right, yes. yeah. right? It's just G's instead of F's. Just a different label for a different function, okay? What you can see is that A, which might have been 3 or 8 or pi, any number you like, it ended up having no actual effect on the process of differentiation because you can just 
factorize it out. He doesn't care what H is, he can just pop right out and then it's like as if, as if the A disappeared and then reappeared all over again. Okay? All right, one last one. And I'm not going to go with first principles for this one because I think your first principles are outed a little bit. Yeah. You've, had, you've had enough of first principles for, for this little chunk, okay? Um, let's think of a constant function. Okay? If our f of x is just a number, right? Like, say, a. We could do this by first principles. We could. But let's not. Let's think about another way of doing this. Underneath this, could you draw for me just a teeny tiny Cartesian plane? If a were a number, someone pick a number for me, please. Three. Three. Three was the first one I heard, followed closely by five, all right? Let's suppose a were just three. What would f of x equals three, what would that look like? What kind of graph would that be? It would be a horizontal line, textbook definition, a horizontal line that goes through y equals 3. Let's call that 3 there. And then here's our horizontal line. Well, horizontal-ish. Okay? So there's 3. Now, remember, all of this work that we've been doing, this first principles, that kind of thing, what it's trying to calculate is, hey, what is your derivative? What was the original name we gave to the derivative? It actually had two words in it. Very close. It's the, it's the, it is a function. It's the gradient function, right? It's like, hey, your gradient, it changes depending on where you are, right? So that's why it's a function. But this is really what I'm calculating. It's gradient. That's why this is rise over run every single time, okay? Now have a look at this horizontal line for me. What's the gradient? Zero. The gradient of this guy, zero. it's zero, right? Because it's not rising anywhere. It's not going up, it's not going down. So therefore, without any, look Ma, no first principles, okay? I can just say f dash x, the derivative of this, the gradient function. It's always zero. It doesn't have to be three. It could be anywhere. So long as it's horizontal, that's the important thing. So when you've got something like this, let's put this as an example. See this guy up here? You can say, I can differentiate them all separately because of this rule. The derivative of a sum is the sum of each of the individual derivatives. Um, when you look at this guy, right, you can treat it like x squared, differentiate that, and then just multiply it by 3 because of this, because it's just a multiple of a function. And then lastly, when you deal with this guy, what happens when you differentiate this as its own separate thing? It just becomes zero, right? Yeah, so let's just quickly rehearse this together. If this is f, then f dash in total will be, first term? 4x to the power of 3. 4x to the power of 3. Thank you. Second term? 6x. Good, because the 2 that comes out the front will multiply by that 3, so you get 6x. Plus 0 plus 0. Ah, careful, careful. Yeah, this is going to become 1x to the power of 0, which is just 1. And then this guy, that becomes 0, so I'll just write that in there you go. Okay, there's your derivative one piece at a time. Make sense? Mm -hmm.